I'm Louise Nicola, and this is The Neuro Experience. The minute, the minute you fall and break this bone, the femur, the minute that happens, you have a 30% chance of dying from the complications, whether it's because you're sedentary and you develop bed sores, or it's because you're incontinent and you die of a UTI, or you get pneumonia because you're sitting in bed and you can't move around and you can't blow off all the fluid. There's so many things that can happen. 30% chance of dying and a 50% chance of not returning to the home where you came from. That forces a decision, a decision that you have to hire a full-time caretaker. That's very expensive. Or the decision that you have to move in with your kids. I can't tell you how many people come into my orthopedic office and say, I don't wanna be a burden to your children. Okay, then let's do something about it now, my friends. And I say that in only the most loving, straightforward way your orthopedic surgeon is gonna say it to you. You either have to hire somebody, you gotta move in with your kids, or you gotta move into a nursing home. It can cost between seven and $15,000 a month to be in full-time care. And if you can't afford that, you have to spend down your life savings until you're eligible for Medicaid in the United States. Those are the options. None of them are happy options. So I would rather us start at 30 and build better bones. I would rather us, the minute we find out we're osteopenic or osteoporotic, to do everything on this earth to build bone, whether it's to take a medication, Mm -hmm. whether even at 70, it is to consider whether some kind of hormone optimization might be good for you. Maybe your heart can't tolerate anymore because you have a lot of heart disease. Systemic estrogen, you could have vaginal estrogen so that you don't get UTIs and die as a result of a chronic inf- of chronic bladder infection or get dizzy standing at your sink from having a bladder infection, right? So we need that decision no matter what age we're, on, we're in. There is not an age when lifting weights is not going to positively affect your bones. Even if you've never lifted a weight in your life, let's start with body weight. Let's retrain our neuromuscular pathways. Let's progressively overload. I mean, there are lots of anecdotal stories all over social media and Mm. and in my life about people who have just picked up weights in their 60s and 70s because muscle attached to bone will pull on bone, as will jumping, whether you're jumping in the water, jumping on a trampoline, jumping on terra firma. That mechanical impact Mm -hmm. is turned into biochemical signals to build more bone. We can change the trajectory of our health if we start early enough. I have five children in their 30s who they're in the critical decade to get it all together. My poor 17 year old, she has grown up with this her whole life and the other day she's like, ah, I gotta count my protein. I hope I'm getting enough protein. I love that. Don't you love it? Yeah. She's like, I gotta build muscle right now. Well, that actually reminds me of this MRI image that you famously Mm -hmm. put up several times. comparing the thigh muscle of a 40-year-old athlete to a 74-year-old sedentary man. That's very unforgettable. It was powerful. Yeah. What blew me away was that the 70-year-old athlete who looked looked younger than the 40-year-old, and that's not just aging, that was a choice. You know, so that was a big study, and so we had many people in each group, but I chose to pull out a representative picture, and it is taken on a life of its own on the internet because it's so profound that in the 40-year-old recreationally active person, man, it was a man in that in that particular picture, he has a gorgeous femur in the center, very thick cortex. He has beautiful muscle architecture and very little peripheral fat. So that's the 40-year-old as baseline. Then I show a picture of what happens with 35 years of sitting around and you might not be able to recognize the picture because the muscle has lost its architecture, three inches of fat around the muscle, the the bone itself has a very thin cortex. It's just, it's nothing you would ever want to become. But then I show a picture of this 74 year old triathlete and it's almost the same as the 40 year old. Bone is an endocrine organ. It acts as a an autocrine, meaning it talks to itself, it, it, the cells, and I'll talk about the cells in a minute, talk to each other to maintain this beautiful homeostasis. And it talks to the body. Because if 
And why wouldn't it talk to the body and not just the muscle, which is adjacent to it, the brain, the gut, the pancreas. It, in men, it talks to the testes. I mean, it talks to every part of our body. And why wouldn't it? Because it's everywhere in our body, right? Bone is in the skull. Bone is in the pinky toe. Bone is in all the way out to the ends of our fingers. Why wouldn't we make it a communication highway? Why wouldn't we give it the capacity to communicate with everything? So bone is a master communicator, and the irony is the body hears bone, but you and I, our conscious brains don't hear bone, meaning we don't know all those things are going on. I think the average person is unaware of their health projection in general. But in terms of looking ahead to what should I be doing at 30 that's going to set up the standards for the rest of my life? How am I going to take advantage of my hormones, which I have on full now, which are going to start declining at least by the time I'm 40, if not before? I don't think the average person is aware of that unless they've been indoctrinated, unless they've lived in my home or they've lived in, so, you know, they're, they're so self-aware. The fact that 70% of people in the United States do no form of formal exercise, it's not just the older people, it's the 30-year-olds too. There is a cataclysmic, chaotic change that happens when estrogen walks out the door, when we no longer have enough uh, eggs in our ovaries to produce the level of estrogen that we've been making in our 30s or before. And when that happens, bone is dysregulated, meaning every every tissue in the body lives in this beautiful state, or the goal is this beautiful state of homeostasis. It's a balance. It's not just work-life balance, it's physiologic balance. Bones do that too, but when you do not have estrogen, the balance no longer exists, but that's not all.